Hi there, it's Vanessa from the other side of the world. I'm working in Auckland, New Zealand at Massey University as a postdoctoral researcher. I want to quickly show you today um, DNA metabarcoding and some of its uh, limitations. I wanted to start with this amazing photo of a kelp forest ecosystem, uh, this some that we have here in the backyard, to highlight the incredible amount of biodiversity that we can find. As you may know, it's not an easy task to characterize this high uh, biodiversity, not only in those kelp forest ecosystems, but many aquatic and terrestrial ecosystems worldwide. But imagine to be able to take a bit of water and discover all the organisms living in there. That's an amazing idea, and that's the idea behind environmental DNA. The basics behind are that all organisms, as you know, has DNA, and they leave DNA traces in the environment. Then we can collect a water sample and look at every trace uh, of DNA that those organisms have laid behind. With a technique known as uh, DNA metabarcoding, uh, we are able to do that. We start with a um, water sample, but not limited to water. It can be a soil or a hard bottom communities, stomach content, or even feces. And then we bring those samples to the lab uh, to extract all the genomic DNA from those organisms and also uh, select a barcode, which is a common region in the DNA across all the species. And like a barcode in the supermarket, we can actually scan and identify the organisms by comparing the DNA sequences against a reference sequence database. And we can find that that sequence belongs to Blue Wave, for instance. So DNA metabarcoding has revolutionized the way to characterize um, the ecosystem biodiversity. It can help uh, to identify microscopic organisms, uh, also cryptic uh, species, um, hard to morphologically, morphologically identify because they are so bodies or it's hard to preserve the morphological traits, and also to identify real species that are not easily found by visual surveys. It has also many biases as any other technique, and there is a lot of attention and work being done worldwide towards a better understanding uh, and take the most advantage of uh, this potential approach. But one of the main limitations is the lack of reference sequences, databases for taxonomic identification of the DNA sequences. Um, half of the sequences that we have, um, that we recover, um, they don't have any match. So let's put it in that way. Imagine having the fingerprints of everyone who has been in a crime scene, which is our target ecosystem. And we look for a match in our fingerprint database, but there is no match found. Um, so that fingerprint is not in the database. Or oh, there is a match that for sure couldn't have been there. Like uh, it has an alibi. And that's because we know uh, their distribution. So if you got that signal that I'm trying to do, you understood that there is a need for DNA with uh, barcodes of all living organisms and also taxonomic created databases to be able to complete those reference databases. Um, I want to highlight also the importance, the key role that the museum collections and also the taxonomic and biogeographic expertise and the digitized biodiversity data has to be able to complete and create those reference databases towards a better understanding of the biodiversity and distribution of the species. So they play a key role on the improvement of these cutting edge technologies. Uh, if you want to, to know more about DNA metabarcoding, potentials and limitations, just you can contact me, Twitter or mail. 
and hope you are well and enjoying the humble day. Regards.